Hello, I'm Bude and welcome to episode 4 of Rebuilding Newcastle United. We're doing a fourth one because FM19 is nearly finished and we're dragging it out. But to be fair, I'm enjoying it and I think this beautiful club and this great little save, which I'm having fun with, deserves a fourth and final cheeky, cheeky little season. If you enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button, you beautiful person. Uh, if you're brand new, feel free to subscribe. Go and check out all the rest of my content. Loads of content coming out for FM20. I should be bringing out very soon. I've never done it before, but I feel like I should this year. Uh, I'm going to do a, a short My Plans for FM20 video where um, I'm going to discuss my plans, really, for the coming year that hopefully will keep you subscribed and hopefully grow my channel on to the next level. I'm very excited to get going. Can't wait for the new game. Um, but yeah, if you want to support the channel that little bit more, you can place to my Patreon. If you are a Patreon, you have a great chance of winning a copy of FM20. You'll also be in uh, the database for my first series. Um, I'm also giving away a couple of games as well. There's a video way back now, way back, where you can enter the competition. Hopefully, I'm going to give one away to my patrons, and I might have two. I've got no, I've got two copies. I might have three copies to give away as well. On top of that, so. Happy days. When the game, the full game is released, that is. Right then, Newcastle United. <laughs> but lots to talk about, so let's get into it. Well, and as you know, we are the champions of England. Won a Premier League, season three, loving it. Uh, we also won the FA Cup. Apparently, though, we did fail Premier League financial fair play regulations, but don't worry, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. We actually lost the League Cup as well. So, you know, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty good year. The year before... Don't forget, we won the Europa League and the Caribbean Cup. So, you know, it's been pretty successful. Now, I've got something to say, right? It's like, it's the end of the game. I've played this game now a lot. Last couple of weeks, I've played it the most, I think, I've played all year. Because I've been polishing off three seasons a week, doing rebuilds. Um, you might know, I'm a massive NFL fan. and the, one of My, my favourite player is Tom Brady. And uh, he's the greatest player ever. And... Um, he says, he's 41, same age as me, or he's a year older than me. And he says, right, why should I stop playing if I feel well and I feel good and when I've got all the answers to the test? And that's how I feel at the end of every football manager. And I feel like that right now. And I feel like I've got a good tactic. I know who to buy. I know what to do. I know how to win. And I just win, 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 pretty much. Um, but that's kind of only so good at a club like Newcastle for the first couple of years because Newcastle is not a club even though we've got a great chairman now who will give me money to spend it's not a club that's going to give me 200 million every year so I'm not going to be able to buy great players every year so unless you start you know maybe developing some of your own you've got to find bargains so I'm going to use another American football story you may or may not know but um, Pete Carroll is head coach of the Seattle Seahawks now he's been there for a while he won the Super Bowl back in I think it was 2013 right and one of the reasons that they think he won the Super Bowl was he came from college football he had massive knowledge of all the college players he came in he drafted a load of them uh, he had a rookie quarterback who's now one of the best in the league Russell Wilson and he won a Super Bowl he even went back to the Super Bowl the year after and got beat um, just by a stupid play call by the Patriots um, but he knew what he was doing and now he's not in college football he's, he's took his foot out of the water to say right it's kind of like this game. Every year you play a bit more. You don't know who's going to work. Real players are getting older. And you start to get into the regen territory. New gen, whatever you want to call them. Um, so you can have initial success. And that's what I find on these rebuilds. And a few of them have thought that. I know what I'm doing here. I know, I know who to buy. And I'm going to be good for a year or two. But then what would happen? If I kept on playing it, kept on playing it. How successful would I be? So this year we've made some transfers but we pretty much recoup the money we've spent like i said we've got tons of it and you know we won the league so i just felt like we needed a couple of changes now after one year with me roberto has gone back to italy and um, I, I wasn't gonna sell him he wasn't happy he only played one game he wasn't happy right but he's still worth a decent amount of money so he's gone to napoli and we just cash back in i've replaced him with a loan to save a few a few quid really because I've had him on another rebuild, and this is my point. I know players who are going to work well in my tactic, but if I kept on playing this another year and another year and another year, 
I'm not going to have that knowledge. I'm going to lose the knowledge and I'm going to have to start taking risks and gambles. You don't know which way it's going to go, do you? Um, but I've had Herbie Kane before and I think he's a, he's a good player, a good young player. He's English, great squad player. Next out of the door is Jack Callback. We've got a decent amount of money for him. Um, he's 31 years old. He's done all right for me. He's, he's been at Newcastle ages. And he's, he wasn't a regular, but when he did play, he scored goals. He, he was all right. But it was definitely time for Jack to uh, hit the road. And I replaced him with Nathaniel. I can never say his second name. So we're going to call him Nate. 26 year old Englishman. We got him from Watford. He's from Chelsea, obviously. We should all know who he is. He actually had stints at Napoli. I don't know if that was a loan or not. Or he was actually at Napoli. I'm guessing it was a loan. Um, but he's a good player. And what he's good about him is, even though he's a central midfielder, technically, if you click on this here, and go on Secunde Valante. I liked some of his main bits. His first touch is decent passing, his positioning. Next in, we finally got our hands on him. Paris Saint Germain didn't want him. They'd loaned him to us for two years. He's been brilliant for me. I mean, he's done so well. He's won four trophies with us Carabao Cup, FA Cup, Premier League, and Europa League. He's only 25. Um, it's cost me a few quid, but we know him. He knows the club. The fans love him. And I know he's a, he's a great defender for me. He just fits. He's a ball player, which fits the, the Volcano, so very happy to sign him. Now, he went on the previous list because he was released. Kevin Clark left. Contract was finished. Uh, it's time for him to go. Uh, he's now playing for Derby County, so good luck to the lad. And we've replaced him with George Mia, who is 24, Spanish. Got him from Colm, where he's been for ages, and I think he's great. Marking, tackling, 17. He could improve again, apparently. Still got a little time... For improvement he's just been relegated that's probably why he got relegated with Colm at the Bundesliga probably why we, we managed to get him it wasn't cheap because when FM20 comes out it's like you're wiping that slate clean I lose the knowledge I lose my tactic I lose everything players you know were good on this might not be the same on FM20 and that always excites me really I could play this game all year but then when the new game comes out I get that new energy that new passion not only to make new content but to learn and I don't know, like, struggle, and I can't wait. I can't, Honestly, I can't wait. Obviously, we are the champions of England, um, but we're competing with teams with huge budgets, so it's going to be a challenge to repeat. Always is anyway, even if you are Manchester United, but we've got a decent goalkeeper. I've stuck with him, because I still think he's all right. I think if I did play a fifth season, that's the next thing I'd go for, a younger, better keeper. Although we have got Woodman, who I have promoted. Good backup, 24 years old. Centre-half-wise, we're laughing with me. Wallace, Lascelles, Dialio, whatever his name is. So a great left back in Rio. Uh, and uh, what's he called? The kid from the academy who actually wants to leave for a new challenge. Not yet, mate. Mr. Paul Dummett. Uh, we've got Conti still at right back. And we've still got Bogle as his backup. In the middle, obviously, it's the same uh, midfield apart from Chabola. Do you know what I mean? And uh, obviously, we brought in the young lad Herbie from. Uh, Liverpool. Going forward, we've got Benedetto, Simeone and Barcelona have let us loan Abel Ruiz again for a second season. Last year, he only played eight times and scored three goals. This year, though, with the way Benedetto's maybe took a step back in quality, now he's in his 30s, I was thinking about giving this kid way more football. And then the rest is the same when it comes to the wings. So we've got Cliver, the other guy, the Dutch guy, <laughs> what's he called? Dilla Rosen, whatever. We've got Rafini still and or, or Solini, I think. So I still got the same four wingers. So I was like, there's no reason. We just won the league. I think we've improved the defence. As long as we can keep scoring goals. No reason why we can't win or at least challenge for it again. Now these are the board's expectations. And obviously we were in five things this year. Because we're in the Community Shield for the first time ever. Because we won, what well, we did the FA Cup and the league out. We saw we're playing... Arsenal, they must have been runners up, I think. But Premier League, they just want us to get qualified for the Europa League. Now, two years ago, we won the Europa League and got to the Champions League. And then that next year, they wanted us to get back to the Champions League. We just won the league. You'd expect Champions League, but no. Europa League. That's weird. Uh, Champions League, they want us to get to the first knockout round. Hopefully, we can get past that. That's why we got knocked out last year. FA Cup 6 round. Carabao Cup, not important. Community Shield, not important, but it'd be nice to win that. Not won it yet. We have a new affiliate as well, Espanyol. We're really expanding this now. Um, obviously, we've got the uh, Japan team, Team Philadelphia from America for the merchandise, but we've got Nice, uh, one of the richest teams, probably richer than bloody Paris now, in France. 
and we've got Espanyol in Spain. So it just gives you more of a scouting network if you want to find players. I've expanded the staff a little bit. Now I've got great physios, coaching's bob on. Um, the scouting team's huge, although it's not the best. Um, who is the best? Who's beating me here? Liverpool. Hate you. And Liverpool. And I was really excited because the computer and its algorithms still don't fancy us. Even though we are the champions of the Premier League, they still don't think they've looked at everything and we haven't got the quality. So that shows you that what I can do as a manager, that my tactics decent, doesn't it? Because we last year was fucking... I, it was amazing. I didn't, I, was, I didn't think I was going to win the league at the start of the season. I don't think we're going to win the league this year. I think we've got a better team, but... Like I said, we're competing with big clubs, man. So again, we had a nice big pre-season, training camp and games in America. I like America. Now and again, I might go to China, but I always like to go to the kind of big money countries. I imagine it's good for the club. I'll hopefully sell some shirts. That's my idea. Um, really, we should play the Philadelphia Union, but I don't. Uh, I kind of try and think of the geography of it. I don't know if you ever noticed that. So you think where Portland Timbers are, they're like Northwest America. And then we've gone down the coast to LA. And then we've gone back up to Seattle, but I had to. But we stayed on that side. And then we've gone over to Atlanta. And then we've done the two New York teams. So, great preseason. We nearly won every game, but we didn't get beat. It's just all about having fun. Team bonding. Well, it didn't go too well. We got beat 2-0 at Wembley. Um, we were crap. Uh, yeah. We weren't that great. Couple of my new players got their debuts. Arsenal, I mean, the game wasn't great. It wasn't a lot of chances, but Arsenal, as you can see, played well better. Henrik Mkhitaryan, who must be like 85 years old, had an absolute beast of a game. They've also got Sancho, haven't they? And we nearly got knocked out of the Carabao Cup. It's kind of become our trophy. We got to the semi-final in my first year. I won it and we knocked out by Spurs. We won it in the second year, beating Spurs. And then we lost it last year, getting beat by Spurs. Oh, the bloody Spurs, I love it. Uh, but yeah, full of 1-1 and it went to penalties. Next up, it was South End away. Um, yeah, 3-1. We should be beating them. I was kind of pissed off that we conceded a goal, if I'm honest. And then last but not least, we've got Crystal Palace. We're a good team on this save. And um, beat them 1-0. Wallace, and one of my forgotten centre-halves. He's a good player. Cost me a lot of money, to be fair. He scored us our goal in the 72nd minute, but we did deserve it. And we got into the semi-finals against a great North London club. You guessed it, it's Spurs. No, no, it's not. It's not Spurs. It's the other bastards. Yeah, it's Thomas Two Shells Arsenal, the team that beat us in the in the charity slash community. I would call it the charity shield. I hate the community shield. Let's call it the charity shield. Yeah, we back they beat us in the charity shield, didn't they? 2-0. So And the top of the league. They're yeah, good at the minute. Which means we're not top of the league. No, it's the first of January. And we're eighth. Although it's it's not as bad as it actually seems, right? We've only lost two games. Now, who else has lost two games in the league? No. We've lost the least amount of games in the league, which shows you we are tough to beat. Where we've been struggling this year is winning. We've drawn 11. We've drawn 11 games, won eight. So we're on 35 points. Could be what we are. Are we 18 points off the top? So I'm already thinking we ain't going to win the league. It's all about now getting back in that top four, not embarrassing yourself since we are the freaking champions. They're silly points dropped, in my opinion. Drew against Villa, got beat off Fulham. Drew with Bournemouth, City, Chelsea, Forest on the run. Then we beat Everton, then we got Drew with West Ham Palace. I mean, we are drawing against teams we should be beating. It's like, do you ever think sometimes? I've had it on this game, and, and you see it in real life where... You know, it's like the Super Bowl, say maybe like the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl, not last year, the year before. I know I always talk about American football, but it's a good way of tell it's a good way of explaining things. So the Eagles still have the same team the next year, but it's like you lose that passion. When you when you're the underdog, like they were when they won it, and you've got that real drive to get your hand on a ring or a trophy, you go for it, don't you? And then once you've got it, once you've achieved it, it's like once you win a gold medal at the Olympics, it's like <sighs> Now of course we're back in the Champions League, this time in Group F. With Barcelona, which is amazing. Um, did Newcastle? What did Newcastle? There's a famous game. Was it? For, if you're a Newcastle fan, I, I might have this right. I can't remember the result, but I think Asprilia, Estino Asprilia, the Colombian backflipper. He was. A, he's a great player. I don't think he scored tons of goals, but he scored three. 
against Barcelona once in the Champions League or Europe, I think. I think he did. Anyway, I don't know if a long time ago. Um, so he's always going to be between us and them, really. No offence to Club Bruges or Salzburg. And it was against us because we, we lost both our games to Barcelona. They were quite close games, to be fair. 1-1. Um, 1-1. One, 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 one. One nil both games, um, and obviously we we won off the others. So we've gone through. So you never know, really. It it's always a bad thing being second. Sometimes that's a good thing. I've won a group thinking, yeah, I'm going to get a shit opponent, and then you draw Paris Saint Germain. Uh, I mean, we won the group last year and drew Borussia Dortmund. Hopefully, we'll get an easy team, or maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe we'll get Carlo Ancelotti and Real Madrid. We were top of La Liga. Maybe we'll just get them. I really thought we were going to do a lot better than we are. And this is why I was talking about what I was talking about at the start of the episode. Because this is when I started to think about it at the halfway point. Thinking, wow, I'm already falling off the rails here. What would I do next year? Player's going to be even older. I'm not going to be able to go out there and sign anyone. I wouldn't even know who to sign. I've got scouts, but like I said, you'd be taking gambles on players. You know, are they going to work in the tactic or not? You know, like, someone like Benny Detto, I've never heard of him. Then you, you see what you can do. Do you know what I mean? So, I really, it really made me realise like how good it is having knowledge. Until your knowledge, eventually is going to run out, and that's when the game's fun, though, isn't it? You know, if you're going to play long term, say that's when you get stuck into it. And if if I was planning this long term, I'd be well taking my scouting. My scouting be, I'd be doing it a lot more in depth, with more seriousness, and I've been paying way more attention to my youth team, which I've not even looked at. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this is the squad, and so we're eighth in the league. Although we've only lost two games, as long as we can start winning some, no reason why we can't get into that top four. I think, um, or at least get back up for the eighth. A bit embarrassing when you're the league lead or well, the league champions. Um, semi-finals against Arsenal, Carabao Cup. We've got Real Madrid in the first knockout of the Champions League. Uh, and we've drawn Crystal Palace in the FA Cup. So there's still lots and lots and lots to play for. Well, of course, we're up against Arsenal in the Carabao Cup. That's our cup, even though we're not the holders of it. We've had so, I've, I haven't took it serious. I've, I've took it more serious this year. Last year, I beat the majority of it. we still got to the final. Um, but yeah, Arsenal, team who beat us in the Charity Shield. We drew nil-nil with at home. So it wasn't great. We needed to win it, really. Yeah, I think both teams up the game. My defence was ace. Um, we scored an early goal and we got another one quite early, like not long after. They came back into it and they lost their best player near the end as well. It was pretty even all the way around. I think we just defended better. Uh, and we scraped through into our third consecutive final. But we were going to come up against Spurs. No. We were going to have to play not only the best team in the world, but the biggest club in the universe. Manchester United, we beat 1-0. Kind of FM'd them. They had way more chances than us. But again, my defence played brilliant. Me, Dialio, Rue and Conte, they have a right little team. They bonded, haven't they? Goalkeeper did all right as well. Ruez, the young Loney, wonder kid. He scored the goal. They had double the chances, more possession. But look at the average ratings. They just didn't play very well. We've got three games left to go. But we've managed to edge our way up a bit. Uh, we've got fifth. Now, we're already in the Europa League, obviously, won the Caribbean Cup. But um, we started to turn things around. Look at the leading goal scorer is. That kid started off slow, maybe a bit of pressure on him. He's not even technically our player, but he really found his feet in the second half of the season. He's now the top goal scorer above Rashford. And have you seen who's third? Wow. But no goal scorers in the Premier League this year, have we really? Um, but he's also got second on the man of the matches as well. He's been... He's been Brilliant. If I was going to play a fifth season, I would try and sign him if we could, but I highly doubt that would be possible. After January, we obviously we had three games on the bounce that we won. We carried that winning streak on, which is what we were going to do that at some point. And then we won the next five games, beating Arsenal on TV. Uh, and then we drew with Bournemouth. Then we beat City, Man City, 3 2. Beautiful game. Uh, drew with Fulham. Got beat off, absolutely got annihilated off Chelsea. I was, they were a good team. Um, I just didn't. Yeah, I didn't expect that. But then we've won our last five games. Uh, beat Everton, West Ham, Palace. We just beat Spurs 3 0, which is a fantastic result away as well, because they are good, you know. Uh, and obviously, we, we're challenging with them. And we're also challenging with United. So I've got to play United. I've got to play Brighton, which we've got to win that. 
and I've got Liverpool who are way above us second in second out there challenging for the league title. But of course we started our campaign to try and retain the FA Cup trophy against Crystal Palace just about doing enough beating them 1-0. Then played two time Champions League winners the mighty Forest uh, away with <laughs> beating them 3-1 with a Benny Detto out trick. It, it's just his injuries this year. If he could have just stayed injury free this year, I think we'd have been another level. Next up, it was a fifth round away again. This time went to South Wales to play Swansea, who we destroyed 3 0. You might have noticed before they are rock bottom. But then in the sixth round, the team we beat in the Caribbean Cup final, the team I've got to play next in the league, the team I'm really battling out for third with, and the biggest club in the world and universe. Manchester United beat us with goals from Greenwood and some dude I've never heard of. The mighty Real Madrid, my anus. Oh, masterclass. Do you know when it just works and you're just watching it happen and you're like, how is it happening? I don't know. I'm just going to take it in. 4-1. And then we went to the Bernabeu, Bernabeu, whatever you want to call it, in Madrid and got a 1-0. And again, and another game that's pretty even, which is one of the greatest games, but... They just never look like doing anything over two legs. But next, we were going to be coming up against a team that is so financially well backed on this game. The longer you play it, they always have the best players, the best regions. I mean, they've got Mbappe, Neymar, Cavani still up front. Uh, but they only just about did it. Mbappe got both goals. They beat us 2-1 at home as well. Uh, Neymar this time got both goals, not Mbappe. I hate Neymar. Although I thought we were better. I just thought we had, it seemed like we did more in the game. I know we don't look it, average rating wise, but we had more chances. I just felt like we did, oh, oh. So we won a trophy, we won the Carabao Cup. We did all right in Champions League, beating Real Madrid, that would have been special. If you were a Newcastle fan, home and away, you'd have loved that one, yeah. Uh, Paris just did more, Neymar and Mbappe, the two best players in the game, arguably. Uh, Man United out, knocked out the FA Cup, hopefully they can go on and win it. Got to play them next. Could we get top four again? I think if this team now, after what we achieved last year, and after having two years in the Champions League, didn't get back to the Champions League, that'd be a huge failure. Well, we started here playing the biggest team in the universe, Manchester United. And we're gonna, we weren't gonna go down. You know what I mean? We weren't gonna get bummed by anyone. We were gonna fight. And so beating these after beating Spurs as well, brilliant for us, especially beating them four-one. Next up is Brighton. Um, and I thought we should be winning this, although we annihilated them. We only just about did it. And they scored in the fifth minute. Um, but obviously we came back into it. Two quite quick goals, really. Um, and we did enough. Nathaniel having a stormer at the end of the year. So good good for him. See, this is the team we were all year, really. We're a good bloody team. It's just kind of find out, found our feet in the league too late. It's that early form. Really? Just up. We could have gone. That... Towards the end, in December, we really started to win games. And after January, we went on that great run. And then we only lost the odd one. And we've been fantastic in a lot of them games. Too slow a start. Nine points away from the title. Arsenal won the league. First time in a long time, but good for them. Nice to, It's nice for different teams, isn't it? Um, and it's good that we're back in the Champions League. Uh, Manchester United aren't. Sorry. Uh, and Ruiz finished the, league, uh, the season top goal scorer. With 23 goals, uh, it's probably the best year for him to do it, seeing as the next high score scorer is a midfielder. I just wonder if there's no major superstar strikers in the Premier League at the minute, but here's what it is. We only lost three games, which I'm super proud of, really. Four years, it's been super successful. We won the Europa League, a Premier League, an FA Cup and two Carabao Cups. Um, unfortunately, I lost a few Cups. We lost the Carabao Cup. I lost the Super Cup, European Super Cup. I lost a charity shield, so we could have had more silverware, but I think if you'd have said to me at the start of this rebuild, Bood, I will give you two Caribbean Cups, the Europa League, Premier League, and FA Cup, but you have to suck me off, I'd have said, get them balls. Get them balls on my chin. So there we have it, guys. That is the end of episode four and the end of rebuilding Newcastle United. Hopefully you've enjoyed the whole four episode series. As much as I've enjoyed playing it, it's been a lot of fun. Make sure you smash that like button. It really does help me. Make sure you subscribe. If you're brand new and if you really want to help the channel, make sure you become a patron. You'll find a link to that down below in the description. And yeah, thanks for the support, honestly. Uh, I'm going to, well, if I could give something back to you all for the support you give me this year, I would. Um, but obviously I can't. But I will try and do as much as I can next year. But yeah, I'm going to talk about all that in my FM20 video. You have a great day. Have a great week. Stay safe. You are amazing. I love you. I'm booed.
I'll see you next time.